This conference will now be recorded. item on the agenda at any time. Well, the comment is designated for discussion only. The public has the opportunity to address the commission on any matter not appearing on the agenda. However, no action may be taken on any matter raised until the matter itself has been specifically included on the agenda as an item upon which action may be taken. Additionally, public comment may be heard on any item listed on the agenda. Persons are invited to submit comments in writing and or attend and make comments on any agenda item at the Lander County Commissioner's Board meeting. All public comment may be limited to three minutes per person at the discretion of the Commission. Please note that the public body may interrupt the open meeting and exclude the public for the purpose of having an attorney-client discussion of potential and existing litigation pursuant to NRS 241015-3B2. I'll call this meeting to order. Donnie, would you leave some pledge today? to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have a moment of silence. Lander County Commissioners may break for lunch from 12 p.m. to 1.15 p.m. <clears throat> Any agenda item may be taken out of order, may be combined for consideration by the public body, and items may be pulled or removed from the agenda at any time. Uh, commissioners, reports on meetings, conferences, and seminars attended. JR, we'll start with you. Yeah, I went to the public, um, the public lands meeting the other day, but it, what we discussed is on the agenda, so... And cover it in. All right. Anything else? That's it. E? Okay. I went to the NACO meeting and I only did it online this time, but we talked to they every month they have a different person that comes in does presentations from the state. And so the natural resource manager was there this time. That was interesting. They have an opening at NACO if anybody's interested in another job. And then I went to the Austin Airport meeting and they had a few questions. They want to know who's doing the fuel and how are they tracking it and who's going to make the reports so that Michelle can put them on the reports for the airport. Uh, the receipts are not working for the fuel after you pay for them. And also, we need to update the sign for the emergency contact. If, like, the fuel runs over or something like that, it still has that company that's no longer contracted with the county. So, and then... Uh, I did a NACO bylaws meeting, and we finished updating the bylaws with NACO, and I went out with the Beautification Committee out to Austin and Kingston. Nice. Thanks, Dee. Do we have any other commissioners online? Okay. Um, so that is it. We'll move into staff reports on meetings, conferences, and seminars attended. Good morning, Commission. Um, so for the Austin Fuel, we are doing the reports in-house, uh, Lakin's doing all of them, and then we can work on the receipts. We've had to generate a few receipts for some pilots that have got them and haven't been able to print their receipts, so we can always generate one in-house and send it to them off of that system. Okay. Um, I believe that we did pull down the signs with the names on there, if there's one there's, still existing up there. Bobby says they're still there. Okay, because myself, Donnie, and Sean were out there, and, and we pulled them off the fuel pumps, so yeah. we'll... Uh, we'll Double check the pilot's lounge and everywhere else, see where else they may be posted, but yeah. and uh, and get some proper contacts there. <clears throat> um, so what I would like to give the commission a little update on what we've been doing with some of the community improvement projects. You guys set aside some money for community improvement. We want you know this to be um, felt visible results. And some of what we've done are uh, <clears throat> we did the rec shop over there. If you go by the rec center, you'll see the shop that's built there, and, and alongside of it, that was that was a building, was a project, but the, um, all the landscaping that went alongside of that was part of the community improvement along with landscaping out in front of this courthouse and some around the, the school there. Uh, you can also see that the overpasses have been cleaned up, the weeds, uh, that was the county and, uh, you know, bringing some people on to help us with that along with the power and some other county properties um, around town. So <clears throat> we're going to get to Austin as well, Dee. We haven't forgot about them. I see, I see you kind of giving me the look. No, 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 I, I was just listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... Uh, 
Main Street, they're taking out all the planners in there. We're putting in new planners. Uh, we have a few people that are volunteering to take care of them planners, uh, kind of have their name in them and a little bit of advertisement for, for themselves if they would like, or uh, or just to make them pretty and kind of be a part of making the community a little bit better. We have a, a meeting coming up on the 18th. That'll be at 3 p.m. that you guys agreed on at the last meeting. And this will be for uh, community improvement projects ideas for moving forward. We don't want to spend our time or money into engineering or other things that eat up time if it's something the commission wouldn't want in the first place or the community wouldn't want. So that on the on the 18th, anybody who's interested in seeing this community get better show up, put your piece in. We we encourage that. We're going to be talking about things as far as you know the back nine potentially on the golf course all the way to you know what themes we're going to use throughout the community um for statues and, and things of that nature that it'll all be listed kind of out in that agenda item <clears throat> and other than that everything else that we have is on the uh is on the agenda or i will touch on at the end of the meeting in the um you know when we wrap up there okay all right thank you bert uh so we'll move into public comment for non-agenda items only is there any public comment okay we'll move into Lenny's oh number. sorry Lenny. <clears throat> Morning, Lenny. Morning. My name is Lenny Shepard, and I just have a comment about a meeting I attended in Austin on the dispensary, and my name was brought up about six or seven times, and I never got to say one thing back. And I don't appreciate it when somebody says I don't have facts saying anything. And here's a bunch of facts that I studied for over a year, me and my wife. And there's another booklet just like this. So when you let one person get up there on a teleprompter and badmouth everybody that's against having a dispensary except three people and badmouth two commissioners, there's something wrong. Uh, somebody's got to get a handle on something like this. I mean, I don't want to sit there and argue with somebody or beat a dead horse. This is a done deal. It's passed. So I got my C there. Now I have another little item. You know, we have the, the town, they're cleaning it up. It's looking good. It's They're trying. Uh, there's, I think, five or six abandoned businesses on Main Street. The fire hall looks like it's abandoned. Man, that's a public building. Can't we do something and paint that up? Put a little money in that and be proud of it? You can go to Valmy or Golconda or Bewalwe or Crescent Valley in Austin. Their fire hall looks nice. I know we're building a new one, but don't let the other one fall down. A little paint would help. And that's all I got to say. Okay. Thank you, Lane. Is there any other public comment? Okay, we'll move on to our consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and may be acted upon by the Board of County Commissioners with one action, without extensive discussion. Any member of the board or any citizen may request that an item be taken from the consent agenda, discussed and acted upon separately during this meeting. Consent agenda materials are available at the Lander County Clerk's Office for viewing and copies are available for a nominal charge. Uh, so one, approval of September 1st, or sorry, September 12th, 2024 consent agenda. Two, approval of June 27th, 2024 meeting minutes. Three, approval of July 11th, 2024 meeting minutes. Four, approval of July 25th, 2024 meeting minutes. Five, approval of August, August 8th, 2024 meeting minutes. Six, approval of August 22nd, 2024 meeting minutes. Seven, approval of payroll change requests. And it looks like we've got items one, two, three, and seven <clears throat> that we'll need a motion on. I have a question first. Yes. When I look at the minutes, when I read them this time, instead of going through and doing the full minutes, they just referred to the fact that you can look at the video and told you what time stamp it was on the on there, so you could go and look at that video. Is that legal? Yeah. So we aren't verbatim because we do have the video, and the price of verbatim is so much more. Okay. So if they go through and make them verbatim, then then that price hikes it up. The time that we takes to get them back also is increased. So yeah, it is perfectly legal to do it that way. Okay, so they can just basically gloss over everything and tell you to look at the video. Okay. Okay. 
Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve uh, one, two, three, and seven. Okay. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Moving into 1.1, payment of bills for discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove the payment of bills. We need to pull check number 225123. I'll make a motion to approve the rest of the bills. I second it. And we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And then we're doing nothing on the one we pulled, right? Right. Okay. Um, so the reason we pulled it was it's just made to uh, one of my clients. So. Uh, 1.2 for discussion and possible action. Actually, we're going to jump it up. I'm sorry. We have some people that had some prior engagements that would like to be able to speak early. So we're going to listen to 1.9, which for discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove Lander County's Public Lands Use Advisory Planning Commission, PLUAX, the recommendation to the county commissioners to hire a contractor, Andy Riber, to review and update the Lander County Policy Plan for Federally Administered Lands. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Wayne, oh, start. Okay, well, mine's more of the commentary and then Wayne will get to the punchline. Okay, so uh, in, just for a little bit of history, the Lander County Policy Plan for Federally Administered Lands was first a Senate bill that was approved in, 19, in the 1980s so in 1984, then again in 2005, and then again in 2017, Lander County um, assigned a group of people through PLUAC to update the plan. So how I found out about it was when we were working on that wild horse presentation, state of emergency, um, it was referred through Louie Lanny to, hey, take a look at this plan. It has some you know, pretty solid stuff in it. And I was blown away because I'd never seen it before. It's a fantastic plan. It, uh, it does need to be updated. And that's where we found a lot of our information on, you know, the, the wild horses and Lander County's perspective on that. But it also talks about everything from recreation to soil to water to everything. It's an excellent plan on how Lander County has some teeth in how our federally managed lands are administered. Um, why I did that is because as I was growing up, it was called the Bureau of Land Management. Lander County and the state of Nevada owns the land and the BLM manages the land, but it has shifted and you guys are all aware of that. It, it fills and it, the belief is they, they own the land and it's nothing against the local people. It's an excellent plan. It does need to be updated. Um, personally, I feel that we did the state of emergency for the wild horses and there has been movement and things are happening with the BLM and, and we're happy about that. But the state of emergency is much larger, and I'm learning a lot more about it by being on PLUAC, on the Public Lands um, Advisory Board. Uh, we have the Green Link transmission that I know Pam talks to you guys about. A lot of water moves happening statewide because we track a lot of the water moves happening. Um, we have recently, I think this last week, Executive Order 14008. It deals with the climate crisis, and it's a Biden and Harris initiative that will impact millions hundreds of millions of acres in the western states with green energy mandates, the solar and the wind and all that stuff. So we are coming to you and Wayne's going to speak more about his process and finding somebody to help us. So we, in our naivety, decided we would update the plan. Well, we got to about page four and said, this is way above our pay grade and level of, well, my level of intelligence. These guys are a little sharper than me. So anyway, we really decided we need help, but it's a great plan and I think it can become a guide. And once it's hopefully done, we need to have it printed out and available because it, it'll help us have some guardrails around what most of us on this advisory board feel is some, some big overreach that's been starting to happen or has been happening. At any rate, and then uh, once this is done, I want to bring up what Utah's doing, but it doesn't apply to this. It's just maybe I'll do it in, if it fits into this, what Utah's doing with the lawsuit challenging control with the BLM. So, Wayne, if you want to speak to what you've been doing. Okay, uh, in the Blue Act Board, we came up with the facts, and the facts were that the, the public land policy, uh, there was a lot of legal legal changes that had occurred over the years, and, and those need to be addressed by somebody professional that... that has experience dealing with that other than just a volunteer board. And anyway, we had we had talked and reached out and I had reached out to, to several different communities and found out what they did. And uh, 
the name of Andy Reber kept coming up. And Andy Reber has, has done the, the updated the public lands policy for Humboldt County. She's in the final stages of that. And, and she explained to me that she could probably uh, uh, piggyback most of our things off of Humboldt counties. And she's also worked for other counties. And this, this would give us the ability to, to be in agreement with other counties around here. And so, so we all had similar policies. And uh, the, the dollar figure that she gave me was $150 an hour, which is really cheap for this kind of uh, uh, expertise. And nobody did I talk to that had a negative word to say about hiring Andy Reber for the results that they got. Okay. And uh, is there any comments from you, Mike? Okay. So it's supposed to be renewed every seven years, so we're on track for it. So if you guys are interested in reaching out to her and maybe pursuing this, we would be appreciative. Okay. Well, that was my question was how often does it have to be renewed so it's every <laughs> yeah. seven years? Yeah, seven years. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, does the board have any questions? No. Okay. Does the public have any questions? All right. Well, I'll hear a motion. I a motion that we approve Hulak hiring contractor Andy Reber to review and update the Lander County policy plan for federally administered lands. Oh, second. I think we're going to have to have an agreement at some point. Yeah, well, that's... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you guys take it from here. Yeah, we might right. have to bring this back one more time. Right. Yeah. So should we just give direction to uh, to bring it back okay. other than a motion? Yeah. So, so we'll just, you guys uh, stand directed. <laughs> and thank you very much. Okay. Can you guys get us that information so we can get some sort of agreement put back on the next agenda? Right. I do, I do believe Pam has all of her contacts. She's great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Now we're going to jump to 1.7 for discussion possible action to approve, disapprove, and or give direction to staff on how to proceed on outlining the guidelines to develop a program for citizens of Lander County to access funds through incentives or reimbursements to improve their real property using a percentage of the net proceed uh, fund set aside for that purpose. So basically, you want to give a background on that, Bert, how we come to this? Sure. So kind of the thought has been with, with this commission, um, a few times we brought up how we can reduce taxes, and it's, and it's always came back to you can't reduce taxes without another entity within the county picking them up or having the ability to pick them up, which is the hospital and school district. <clears throat> so... We wanted to hitch net proceeds to our community, so every time they tried to sweep net proceeds, the community would have a reason to fight for our net proceeds and not just the commissioners. Because I don't think that they realize what a big deal it is every time that they come in, you know, and every so many years they come in and take a shot at it. Um, the legislature's meeting again, so, you know, every every few years they come and they take a swat at it, and, and it'll probably, there'll probably be another swat this year. <clears throat> the thought behind this was to somehow refund every property owner in Lander County and the initial thought was property owners that have a livable structure that is permitted on Lander, on Lander County ground, um, not just, you know, people that own chunks of land that may not live here have any connection to our, to us. Well, legal um, feels that there may be a conflict there that, that that may be discriminatory in some way, shape or form. So the, the next idea is to create a program much like we have with our business improvement plan where we take a percentage of net proceeds that we receive and we apply it to a fund that any citizen of Lander County can come in and access that fund to whatever level you guys would like it accessible. Um, but they would have to show some sort of improvement, whether it's, you know, they mowed their weeds or they painted their house or poured a sidewalk or did something um, to also improve the community so it would be hitched to an improvement to the community, then we aren't giving money away. Now we just need to, before we uh, continue pushing forward on this, we just need to make sure that we have direction from this commission on where we want to take this and, and to what level and how much time we want to put into trying to get something hitched to these net proceeds so we aren't spinning our wheels. Yeah, that's about the background. Just I don't so, know if that sums it up. No, it does, yeah. So my, that, so when, when I first heard and, and was looking at this, I, I liked the idea of being able to pay back, because that was the whole point was, you know, we were getting calls and complaints like taxes are outrageous. They've gone up and found out really there's nothing that we could do about it. But I mean, I'm geared more for like, I'd like to see like to where 
there's a give back to more Lander County citizens than just people wanting to improve the properties. Now, I know there's some opinions legally that that might not be possible, but man, I'd really like to, me personally, I'd really like to dissect that to see if that's actually legitimate and that we can't. You know, I had something more in, in lines of like what Alaska does with the pipeline, right? Every man, woman, and child gets a dividend check back. Well, we're dealing with net proceeds. It is Lander County's mineral in the ground that they're taking out. I think if there's a way that we could give it to every Lander County citizen. That would be ideal for me, my, in the way I'm thinking. Uh, now, if we find out that it can't be that way, this, I guess, is I guess that's what we're discussing is the other avenues how we can do it. So, do you guys have any questions or ideas or? At one point in time, we had talked about using it as an incentive to get people that have, you know, 20 foot weeds and 50 old junk cars to use that as an incentive to try to get them to clean it up. People that have nicer properties, which we pay more taxes because we have nicer properties. We have sidewalks and grass and, and outbuildings and we get hit on all of them. Um, so giving the people that have nice properties something that more beneficial than the people that have the 20 foot weeds and the 50 dead cars it would be beneficial I think but you know or you know all the junk piled behind their business <laughs> yeah because that's kind of what I think is the people that have worked hard to improve their properties to make it look good it's almost with the system of what we're like looking at today it's almost like they're penalized we are it's absolutely like they're penalized and the people that are wanting to take the money to improve the projects I get the idea but where does it leave all the people that have been responsible in the past it's almost a a bit of a penalization is how I see it, but yeah, but you know, so I, I I agree with you. So I drove around. I got here early today, so I was driving around Battle Mountain, and there are some beautiful properties, and then there are some of them that you're just going, "Are you kidding me? Why aren't we doing something about these?" And it's the same way in Austin and Kingston. You know, it's just giving by giving. I don't know how to put it, but giving the people that have all this junk incentive to clean it up is what we should be doing. Yes, so the, the initial thought when we were talking about this was we were going to do a, uh, you can hire companies that come in and they, they do a mass sweep of your county. So it's a third party. It's not, you know, anybody from the county that would go assess every property to make sure that they're compliant right. with code. And anybody that wasn't, then they would we would have a list that would show that there was code compliance there or non-compliance. And they wouldn't get the refund for that, that year until they came in and, we went and said, oh yeah, now you're in compliance, check them off the list next year, you get to, you get to be a part of this incentive package, right? Um, and it's just a matter of getting that through legal and seeing how we can how we can do that, if we can do that, um, without it being discriminatory, because I think that that was the concern at this point. All right, so if they do that and they use our money and they hire a mower to come in there and mow their weeds and they clean all that up, and then two years from now, it's back to where it was or the next year because they wanted that incentive money. Do they have to pay it back? You know, I mean, or that, that it really, there's a lot of questions there, but I think it's a great idea. We just need to figure out how to. Uh, that's what we're here for today. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, so I'd open it up to public uh, comment or discussion, questions, ideas. John Davis, uh, I agree with uh, Commissioner Sparks and Commissioner Helming that I've done my job in taking care of my property. I've spent the money. There's zero incentive for me to get on board with just as a grant process. Uh, talk about code enforcement. That's probably where the county needs to start. There's a rule book that's in place, enforce it, then you can give back to them in some way. Ten, the way I look at it, 10% of $10,000 tax bill is more than 10% of a $1,000 tax bill. If, if you come up with a percentage on what you're going to do based on the property, uh, in my eyes, that's a fair way because, I mean, so you think some, like some, some of us pay more because we're assessed more. Some of us pay less because we're assessed less. Because we have that, nicer buildings and sidewalks. Correct. Yeah. So, but this is a round number. I mean, it's 
if you put it into a, a percentage-based theory or formula, those who pay more get more back. Those who pay less get less. So there's no discrimination based off whatever you're paying in taxes. I don't know how they can discriminate against that. But if you tie it, in my mind, just thinking out loud, that would be a better way to approach it. But to get back to the Bert hit on the code and what uh, Commissioner Helming is saying is that you need to, all we got to do is enforce what's already there and they're going to reap the benefits anyways. I mean, uh, Alaska, every man, woman, and child gets a check. I guarantee you they're not all spending it on their property. I mean, there's, you're not going to be able to drill down and tell them how they're going to do that unless it, how they're going to spend it unless it is in the form of a grant. In, is that right? And then there's strings attached, right? I think you're, you're trying to get, yes, you want, it's going to be hard to attach strings to this. So I think we're combining two topics. We, we would love to see it go for the beautification, correct? But uh, yes. the idea is is that it, and that would be the code violation. If they're in violation, then you don't get the money. But the uh, but the real the real hook to this is getting the net proceeds hitched to our people that would be upset about that being stripped from them. So it, it has the the dual hooks there, and that's where that that was what I'm saying. On I mean, you're not you're going to have a hard time outside looking in being able to do that if my understandings are right because you can't. I don't know how you do that. Bert. Well, we don't expect them to spend the money on their pro fixing up their property, but we expect them to be in um, in compliance with the current county code in order to receive the money. So uh, the, uh, the the idea isn't necessarily to give them the money to improve their property if we were going that route. Now, the second route, which would be creating a fund that people could access and, and apply for, then it would be directly hitched to property improvements. Um, so I, I guess that them are kind of if, but if I must have misunderstood you, then can you make, can you tie it to the code though? Or are you going to be able to hold that money back if you tie it to the code? If we went with the first scenario, yes. If we went with the first scenario where every, every property owner in Lander County gets a check, unless they're not compliant with code, then they don't get a check. But that's the one. That's the scenario that that we're being told may be not legal. Correct. So the the second scenario is creating a fund or percentage of the net proceeds that is in a fund that people apply for, and they would have to go through an application process to access the money. And that's where I think that you're saying individuals like yourself have no point in applying for it. Your house is already perfect. Well, or it's not, not, not perfect. perfect, not perfect. But, I don't mean I don't yeah. mean that. But I mean your house is is good enough that you don't necessarily need to apply for that Correct. or would you want to um so, so that's, that, that, that's one i don't agree with yeah. because the ones that are doing taking care of their property already are reaping no benefits so the other one the the original idea if it's tied to the code i'm good with that but can we make the caveat that it's for lander county citizens only and all the out of town out of county property owners or out of state property owners do not benefit from that? Well, I think that's why we wanted to make it a, a livable, code compliant, taxable structure. That way it eliminates, so the whatever parcel that's on, um, that would be what the refund goes back to. Um, but that eliminates all bare ground. Bare ground, correct. Okay. It doesn't have a livable, taxable structure. Um, so and that was our idea behind that. So the guy that owns seven properties in Austin on Main Street would get money, even though he doesn't have any of them open. He'd have seven taxable livable structures that are code compliant. Yep, he would get, he would be refunded. So we're not really accomplishing anything to do something about our uh, empty businesses. On the flip side of that, though, whether there's the the vacant land guys are still paying taxes. That, so how do you do? I mean. Well, I think them are some of the caveats, like why we wanted to have this discussion to see yeah. where where we can work our way through that, or, or what the desire is, and then and then we can have some bullet points we can bring back to legal and let them 
check some of the boxes. So that was the whole point was to give back and yeah. however we need yeah. to slice that because it's it's all of ours now to resource. Right? So does that if if you're what about your com uh, commercial building? What about NGM? Do they get a slice of the pie back based on their buildings and tax tax base at the mine? Do they get a Good refund point. on that? Good point. I would I would think so. They're yeah. I mean, well, it's their yeah. money. <laughs> but well, so now we're now we're now we're mixing private and business. We have a program set aside for business, right? Which is yeah, similar. But I think I think he's talking about a blanket oh. refund. Just as opposed to a, uh, uh, right, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if 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 you have seven properties or 22 properties, you get a check for each one of those properties, or you just get one in general? No, I think you'd get a, a check for every property. The, the idea was, like, say, this is all this is all open for discussion. Yep. So the, the developers was, that have split off and haven't sold would really benefit from that. Not if they don't have livable structures. Uh, structures. That's the whole. That's the other thing that drives. If you have a bird around, hey, wait, maybe I will put it on. You know, I'm going to get some sort of a a rebate, you know, it just that gives some incentive for people to build, right? And um, if you spread it out through every property owner in the county, we'd end up sending checks for twenty dollars. There's yeah. a lot of small parcels, and and a, even a few million dollars, which sounds like a lot when you divide that up into thousands, it uh, it turns into not very much. Fast. So the the idea was to generate as much back to those who are paying the most. Uh, yeah, who are actually vested in our community, right. um, not the not the massive landowners, you know, that don't live here and, and have no structures on there. So, personally, I mean, we belong to an LLC that owns quite a bit of of bare ground in Lander County. So, personally, I don't see a problem in not paying, not reaping a benefit from that, but reaping a benefit on my home, I agree with. So I, I guess I can see both. So I don't, I'm one guy that says I don't expect anything from my bare ground. Yeah. And I would hope that the rest of the, the landowners would be okay with that, bare land. And if the, you know, I mean, something that could be considered is some of these businesses have to be occupied. You know, if you guys wanted to make it a, yes. a, a you know, an incentive to occupy livable structures. I, mean, I don't know. Uh, it's It's all open for discussion. And then we can go back and let legal tell us if, if we can really do this or not. Houses that have been sitting empty for X amount of years and empty businesses are exempt. Okay. All right, thanks, Tony. Thank Is there any other public comment or discussion on it or ideas? I think it's a fantastic idea. And um, I've, drive, I've driven around the town, and Dee and I did some driving down south. And honestly, it's such a small percentage of this community and those communities that are eyesores, it's it's not like every other you know resident looks bad. This this program, the first one that Bert was talking about, has the potential. And I've been here for closing in on 60 years, <laughs> and it's always looked like this. Actually, it looked worse. It did. You guys know that we were the armpit. It looked way worse. It, it used to be maybe 25% of every residence was rough and now it's, it's down probably to 10 percent or less so i think this this has the potential and let's just figure out any legal loopholes we have to figure out because if if i i personally we have a couple of rentals and i know one or two of them are right on the edge of out of compliance myself you know like you just get busy and, they, and you get distracted and it would definitely motivate me because we do pay an awful lot in property taxes but the, the, the end game for me is is if you just make it a fund and people can can come grab from it. The wrong people are going to be grabbing from it. The people that don't need to, mm -hmm. and the people that need to work on their properties have zero incentive to come grab that money. It has to be some sort of a, you know, right. clean it up where you don't get it. So I think it's fantastic. Okay. Um, is there any other public uh, questions or comments on it? You guys have any more questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess um, we will just. Um, so I'm understanding right the 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 direction now or the understanding from the community and the and the commission is that we want us to proceed forward with our initial idea and see how legal that is to and then come back to you with the, with a list of ideas on code compliance on livable or non livable structures um, and kind of go through everything that yeah. we discussed 
and then link a percent, and then we can actually put a percentage if, if legal, and we'll, we'll check with the Department of Taxation. Um, Lakin's got a you know pretty good contact there that'll work through some of this and let us know what they think on legality of it, and come back to you guys. Is that my understanding yeah. with our with our initial idea? And that's a good summation. Link it to occupied structures and Lived code in. compliant. Yep. Okay. Yep. Lived in or used? Yes. Proper. Robert Quick, um, I just have a, a couple comments just to think about for that uh, plan that you're talking about. Do you need to have some type of appeal process for somebody that doesn't just that disagrees with their not in code compliance and the fact that um, getting the money to improve my property is that triggering the assessor to raise my taxes? Yeah, good question. The sidewalk. <laughs> good question. Yeah, so I think that is stagnant after the first year when people's taxes go up. Yeah, so it's I think stable. the direction that I have is not necessarily that the money is linked to you improving your property, it's linked to your property being code compliant. Yes. Yeah. So I'm just saying that yeah, good point. properties improve. Your taxes are going up. So yeah, we every one of us that are improving our property are getting beat with that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Uh, yeah, that was that. You're correct, Bert, and your summation. Did you, any other questions? Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, we're going to jump. We're going to take one other item, and that's 1.6 for discussion of possible action to approve disapprove the use of the old Lander County Jail located at 25 East Second Street by the. Silver Senior Class of 2025 for the purpose of implementing the yearly haunted house event and fundraiser from September 12, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. Morning, Alicia. Good morning, Alicia Price for the record. Um, so this will be the last year the kids do it. It's a great fundraiser for them um, to go towards their um, graduation party, which um, we include um, Battle Mountain in Austin last year. We sent a couple things over there, so we hope to get them a little bit more next year too. Um, and maybe those kids would like to come over and. I don't know how we'd get them here, but um, it's a lot of fun for kids. Keeps a lot of them out of trouble for the fact that they come and help decorate. They love to come in there and scare. Um, and then they're earning money to go towards their project. So um, this will be the last year because Cassandra's retiring out. She said she's not doing it anymore. So oh. And she's like the, the creative girl there. So um, anyway, so um, if we could get it one more year, it'd be awesome. And then we'll get all of her uh, junk out of there and clean it up in, by December. Thank you. So. Uh, commission, have any questions? Commission? You run it clear through that whole time? Well, because we got kids that do sports, so in order to get them in there to work and get all that up, you should come over. It's pretty amazing. Should, I should, mean, yeah, yeah they, I mean, we build walls in there so that they have to navigate right. through, and yeah, it's it's quite extensive building it and then um, taking it back down, packing it up. Right. Yeah. Up. We've kind of laxed a little and left some that packed it up and left some in there, so it wasn't as hard, but. Um, so basically you run it from the 1st of October through November 15th or whatever? Yeah, yeah, like they'll start, like once we're approved, they'll get in there and start um, decorating and building the walls. So, um, yeah, so it's, uh, if you get a chance, maybe bring some of those kids over one night because it's it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a great little haunted house. And I'll talk to Amber. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, cool. Uh, and so thank you for moving me up. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the use of the old Lander County Jail located on 25 East 2nd Street by the Sober Senior Citizen, Sonia, Sober Senior Class of 2025 for the purpose of implementing a yearly haunted house event and fundraiser from September, September 12th, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. Okay, so we have a motion. Is there a I second? second it. Motion and second. I want everybody to say aye. 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 Okay, thanks, Thank Alicia. you so much, guys. Okay, so we'll get back on to our normal of uh, course here. So 1.2 for discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove, authorizing up to three temporary part-time deputy sheriff's positions to be funded with existing budgetary funding while the sheriff's office continues to seek qualified candidates. These temporary positions would be authorized for a period not to exceed June 30, 2026. Why are we having such a hard time hiring people? Uh, morning, Commissioner Robert. Such a great program, sheriff's right? office. Yes. Um, Morning, Robert. Just a little background. Currently, we have four open sworn positions in the agency, um, as well as one deputy is being deployed with the National Guard for over a year, starting two days from now. Oh. And I have another deputy that is, um, we're looking at probably an extended sick leave for an injury. Mm. Um, we continue to do our recruiting. It, we're like most other agencies. 
there's not a lot of qualified candidates. Um, through our recruiting, we've tested, um, just recently we've tested six candidates and uh, four of them after receiving a background didn't put the background in. Oops. And uh, one other uh, was already been disqualified for drug use. So our, our some of our biggest issues are um, uh, the drug use that's disqualifying candidates and the extensive background we're doing is uh, ends up with the with the other areas we look at um, criminal history and so forth is disqualifying candidates well let me ask you this so if it's a qualification issue how would that not affect part-time people as well part-time will allow us to hire already certified retired deputies um, and not affect PERS because it's under Social Security right. gotcha okay um, we have one current um, retiree that's applied to do that. I have interest from the second one. So this is kind of a stopgap while we're continuing to try and find full-time employees. So let me ask you this. On the part-time side of it, how is their pay de determined? Their pay, we would pay them the same wage as a starting wage um, okay. it, that's lined out the contract. Okay. Good. Although they don't apply to it, we, right. we pay them the same wage. Okay. That they don't receive any of the bennies or the purrs? Correct. Or, yeah. Okay. Are you looking at putting any of those in Austin? Um, the one we have that has applied is for Austin. They want to work. Nice. Um, Not having a just, deputy full time there. Just on a side note, we, we have another deputy that's currently in training right. specifically for Austin. Right. And okay. we continue to um, staff Austin from Battle Mountain. Yeah, for about six hours a day. So if we have a call in the middle of the night, we have to wait for you to get here from Battle Mountain. Yes. If we have an emergency call or anything, so having deputies there again will be really nice. And does this does this have to be done in cooperation with the union? Are they? How does that all work? Well, that was going to be my question because you are extending this out until June 30, 2026, and the union's contracts expire June 30th, 2025. But that's it. Part time has nothing to do with oh, union. Oh, that's correct. Okay, so part time is completely within our control. All right. Okay. Okay, good. Any other questions? No. Okay. Does the public have any questions or comments on it? All right. We I will hear a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the three temporary part-time deputy positions to be funded by existing budgetary funding while the sheriff's office continues to seek qualified candidates. I second it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, there are Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move into 1.5 for discussion of possible action to present water pollution control permit for the Robertson Mine Project. 1.5? 1.3. I'm oh, sorry. 1.3, uh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, I'm Maggie Corbury. I work for Matta Gold Mines. I am the permitting lead for the Robertson Mine Project. Um, I submitted a letter to the commission. I have copies, your row copies coming in the mail, but I submitted a letter for today's presentation um, to discuss the water pollution control permit that is required um, for the Robertson Mine Project. Um, we will be submitting a water pollution control application to Nevada Division of Environmental Protection, Bureau of Mining and Regulation and Reclamation um, per the Nevada NAC code 445.5 or 4. 45.8394. Um, the regulation come, they will be administering this permit to Nevada Gold Mines with the application. Every mine in the state of Nevada has to have a water pollution control permit. The purpose of the permit is to make sure that the mines are not degrading state waters. Um, our facilities would need to meet a zero discharge standard. So meaning for Robertson, our process solutions would be managed um, on site and would not go off site um, impacting state waters. Um, the water, water pollution control permits are subject to a public review um, and notice requirements and must be re reviewed and renewed every five years with the state of Nevada. Um, the permits include groundwater, surface monitoring, quarterly reporting requirements. Um, the regulation branch would require regular inspections of the site. Um, and facilities to confirm that we are compliant with our water push control permit if approved. Um, 
non-compliance could lead to penalties um, and corrective actions to the site. Um, and then maintaining the maintaining a water pollution control permit does not excuse us from like um, complying with other permits that may be required under federal and state and clear water acts. Um, and then we are like we're here today just to notify the county commissioners that we are applying for this permit. Um, it doesn't require any approvals from the commission, but we're really happy to answer any questions about the water pollution control permit. Okay. Well, thank you. Are there any questions? Does the public or staff have any questions? Okay, great. I'll hear. Actually, there's really no motion, but no. thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into 1.4. For discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove the memorandum of understanding between Lander County and Battle Mountain Chamber of Commerce in an amount not to exceed $12 per year. So, this is just our standing agreement we have with like the Civic Center Chamber. That Yeah. Uh, commission, have any questions on that? No. Does the public have any questions, comments? Okay, I'll hear a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the memorandum, memorandum understanding between Lander County and Battle Mountain Chamber of Commerce and the amount not to exceed $12 per year. Okay. I second it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We'll go to 1.5. For discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove the bid award for Battle Mountain Well 6 Water Storage Tank Rehab Project, PWP number LA-2024-460, one Olympus and Associates in an amount not to exceed $1,205,500 recommended for acceptance, two bar construction DBA RDC in an amount not to exceed $1,321,980, and Viking Painting LLC in an amount not to exceed $1,747,300. Morning, Donnie. Good morning, Commission. This is the bid to replace the rotted out floor on that two million gallon tank over here at Well Six. Coming this, in a little bit. Yeah, this is the one we've been talking. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Have Have they got the repairs done in the bottom of the tank? That's what this is for. Oh, this is for, oh, this this is is for, for that. Yep. And painting the. Yeah, and recoating it. That's, yeah. The interior, okay. right? Recoating mm -hmm. the interior. The interior. Yes. Yeah. So, Commission, have any questions? Public, have any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, John Davis, sorry, this is the thing. Didn't you just spend a bunch of money on arsenic removal on it? Is that the same one? Yeah, we built the arsenic plant. Yes. Okay. All right, I will hear a motion. And I'll make a motion that we approve the bid award for Battle Mountain Well Number 6 Water Storage Tank Rehab Project PWP Number LA 2024-460 to Olympus. Yep. You want to, Not to exceed $1,205,500. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second it. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Uh, we'll go to 1.8. For discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove amendment number three to the one Nevada agreement on allocation of opioid recoveries, as well as exhibit G, which includes a list of additional potential and actual defendants to the litigation agreement. Bill, do you have anything you'd like to say on it? Well, it's, um, as you can tell, they, they keep adding defendants to it. That's part of it. And they just keep noticing little things that are wrong. So they've been making corrections. The Attorney General's office is mainly uh, spearheading it for the state. And, uh, to be honest with you, there's not a lot we could do if we wanted to, unless we just didn't want to participate. Right. But, uh, but it looks okay. I mean, with all of the caveats that we've stated before regarding it. Okay. Does the uh, commission have any questions? Public have any questions or comments? Okay. I'll hear a motion. Uh, my motion that we approve Amendment 3 to the One Nevada Agreement on Allocation of Opioid Recoveries, as well as Exhibit G to the Litigation Agreement. 
Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we'll move into 2.1, correspondence, uh, reports, futures, and items. You guys have any futures and items you'd like to see? Um, no, no, at the moment, believe it or not. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, if there's none, we'll move into public comment for non-agenda items only. Is there a public comment? I brought it up earlier, but it didn't fit as well. So I just wanted to, um, there is an, uh, just Google it, Utah, the state of Utah is filing, has filed a lawsuit challenging control over the BLM lands in the state of Utah. BLM manages about 70%. And of course, when you read through the articles, it feels like the ownership piece, and so they're going all the way back to the original intent of the Constitution. Good and so them. we were discussing it at PLUAC, and I thought I would bring up, just so you're aware of it, that the land managers have become land owners, and as you guys know, I think with the exception of Alaska, Nevada has the highest percentage of BLM controlled lands, and um, in my mind, and this is my personal opinion, it's not by accident that Nevada and Alaska are the most controlled because we are also the most wealthy. I know most of you guys know that um, I think we're third or fourth in the world in gold production, in minerals production. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, that's just the state of Nevada, that's not the United States. So you start with, you know, China and Brazil and Africa and Nevada. So it's not accidental. And I've heard my entire life, well, yeah, we need the BLM to manage it because, you know, wildfires. Well, when you're the wealthiest state in the union and one of the wealthiest regions in the world, and, you know, due to the fact that we're the most mountainous region, one of them in the world, um, I'm pretty sure we could figure out a way to manage and deal with wildfires, et cetera, with some ingenuity. So anyway, I thought you might want to take a look at that. And then uh, Bill goes to our meetings and he talked about some sort of thought of maybe connecting with, I don't know, Bill, because I'm not an attorney, so. Can't take action. I'm, I was thinking we might put something on the agenda at a future meeting, but I mean, we just met Monday and that was too late to add anything for this agenda. Yeah, tell Reno right now how good the wildfire management's going. <laughs> how many structures have they lost? Um, how many might, acres? You know, the commission might consider putting an item on the agenda for uh, for some of the solar fields that are coming in. I think Pam has a lot more information yes. on that. But we uh, and I have, I have a fair amount as well. But it it probably serve us a lot better to have that as an agenda item. If uh, if this commission would like, so we can update you guys on on what is coming to the the western half of the United States and the and the land that they're intending on using for solar um, projects. So. Maybe we can make that item if you guys would like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, NACO has been talking about that a lot. Nye County is uh, very proactive and is happy to share any of the stuff that they've been doing that where they're trying to fight all of this solar. So. And I think uh, we can just make that a uh, green energy yeah. uh, topic if you guys don't mind. Yeah, because it, of the wind covers, farms yeah. too. All right. Uh, is there any other on public comment for non-agenda items? Okay, I'll hear a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second it. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.